Hello everyone, thank you for joining us for uh, today's uh, collective worship. Uh, I thought we'd just uh, have a, a normal assembly today, well as normal as we can manage. So a song, uh, a story and a prayer. Uh, but first we're going to have our opening prayers and light our candles. We light a light in the name of God the Father who made us. We light a light in the name of God the Son who is the man We light a light in the name of God the Spirit who helps us. Light three lights for the Trinity of Love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, so we're going to have our song now. Um, I've had a pretty clear steer from a certain member of Year Five of my acquaintance, and who am I to argue with a Year Five girl? So uh, it's going to be this song here, and a quick recap of the actions before we begin. Who's the King of the jungle, ooh ooh, best monkey sounds. Who's the king of the sea? Bubble bubble bubble, fish under the sea. Who's the king of the universe? Why did you can? And who's the king of me? I'll tell you. J E S U S. Yes. So that's yes. We could do that sideways on. So that means yes. Yes. He's the king of me. He's the king of the universe. The jungle and the sea, bubble, 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 ooh, ooh. And I've got my glamorous assistant to do the actions for me again. I know, the phrase embarrassing dad dancing doesn't even come close, but it's all the only one I can find, so, you know, there we go. So we're going to use uh, this story today. So if you have a copy at home, can we pause this, uh, go grab it, read along with me. And if you haven't, absolutely fine. You can just kind of listen along and, uh, and anyone can join in at any point with whatever they like. Uh, so here we go. The smartest giant in town. George was a giant, the scruffiest giant in town. He always wore the same pair of old brown sandals and a same old patched up gown. I wish I wasn't the scruffiest giant in town, he said sadly. But one day, George noticed a new shop. It was full of smart clothes. So he bought a smart shirt, a smart pair of trousers, a smart belt, a smart stripy tie, some smart socks with diamonds up the sides and a pair of smart, shiny shoes. Now I'm the smartest giant in town, he said proudly. George left his old clothes behind in the shop. He was about to go home when he heard a sound. On the pavement stood a giraffe who was sniffing sadly. What's the matter, asked George. It's my neck, said the giraffe. It's so very long and so very cold. I wish I had a long, warm scarf. 
Cheer up, said George, and he took off his stripy tie. It, it didn't match my socks anyway, he said, as he wound it round and round the giraffe's neck. It made a wonderful scarf. Thank you, said the giraffe. As George strode towards home, he sang to himself. My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe, but look me up and down. I'm the smartest giant in town. George came to a river. On a boat stood a goat, who was bleating loudly. What's the matter? asked George. It's my sail, said the goat. It blew away in a storm. I wish I had a strong new sail for my boat. Cheer up, said George, and he took off his new white shirt. It kept coming untucked anyway, he said, as he tied it to the mast of the goat's boat. It made a magnificent sail. Thank you, said the goat. George strode on, singing to himself. My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. But look me up and down. I'm the smartest giant in town. George came to a tiny ruined house. Beside the house stood a white mouse with lots of baby mice. They were all squeaking. What's the matter? asked George. It's our house, squeaked the mouse. It burned down and now we've nowhere to live. I wish we had a nice new house. Cheer up, said George, and he took off one of his shiny shoes. Uh, it was giving me blisters anyway, he said as the mouse and her babies scrambled inside. The shoe made a perfect home for them. Thank you, they squeaked. George had to hop along the road now, but he didn't mind. As he hopped, he sang to himself. My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. But look me up and down. I'm the smartest giant in town. George came to a campsite. Beside a tent stood a fox who was crying. What's the matter? asked George. It's my sleeping bag, said the fox. I dropped it in a puddle. I wish I had a warm, dry sleeping bag. Cheer up, said George, and he took off one of his socks with diamonds up the side. It, it, it was tickling my toes anyway, he said, as the fox snuggled into it. It made a very fine sleeping bag. Thank you, said the fox. George hopped on, uh, singing to himself. My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. One of my socks is a bed for a fox. But look me up and down. I'm the smartest giant in town. George came to a squelchy bog, and beside the bog stood a dog, who was howling. What's the matter? asked George. It's this bog, said the dog. I need to get across, but I keep getting stuck in the mud. I wish there was a safe, dry path. Cheer up, said George, and he took off his smart new belt. It was squishing my tummy anyway, he said, as he laid it down over the bog. It made an excellent path. Thank you, said the dog. The wind started to blow, but George didn't mind. He hopped on, singing to himself. My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. One of my socks is a bed for a fox. My belt helped a dog who was crossing a bog, but my trousers are falling down. I'm the coldest giant in town. Suddenly George felt sad and, and shivering and not at all smart. He stood on one foot and thought, I'll have to go back to the shop and buy some more clothes, he decided. He turned around and hopped all the way back to the shop. But when he got there, he was closed. Oh no, cried George, and he sank down onto the doorstep, and a tear ran down his nose. He felt as sad as all the animals he'd met on his way home. Then out of the corner of his eye, he saw a bag with something familiar poking out of the top. George took a closer look. 
My gown, he yelled, my dear old gown and sandals. George put them on. They felt wonderfully comfortable. I'm the coziest giant in town, he cried. And he danced back home along the road. Outside his front door stood all the animals he'd helped. They were carrying an enormous present. Come on, George, they said, open it. George untied the ribbon. Inside was a beautiful gold crown and a card. Look inside the card, George, said the animals. George put the crown on his head and opened the card. Inside it said, Your tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. Your shirt's on a boat is a sail for a goat. Your shoe is a house for a little white mouse. One of your socks is a bed for a fox. Your belt helped a dog who was crossing a bog. So here is a very fine crown to go with your sandals and gown of the kindest giant in town. I hope you enjoyed the story. I love a good story, particularly a good fable. And I think that was a kind of modern fable. So fables, I would say, are stories with some fantastical element like a giant, smartest giant in town, or sometimes it's a wicked witch, or it's a dragon, or it's something magical. And even though they've got this unreal fantastical aspect, they also usually tell us something about how to be in the real world. Uh, some other person once put it this way, a chap called G.K. Chesterton. Uh, children don't need fables to tell them that dragons exist, because of course they already know dragons exist. Uh, children need fables to tell them that dragons can be defeated. Uh, we can beat the dragons. There's something a bit like a dragon travelling around our world at the moment. It's not big, it's not breathing fire, it hasn't got wings or scales. It's a tiny, invisible-to-our-eye virus, isn't it? Uh, and it's making people so sick. And like as if it was a dragon, we're all sheltering in our own homes. Uh, we're doing that to keep ourselves safe, to keep our family safe, and to keep other people safe as well. But just like the dragons in the stories, this virus will be defeated. And it will be defeated in the same way. In the stories... How are the bad things overcome? Well, sometimes it's because people are clever and use their brains. I'm thinking uh, the mouse in the Gruffalo, uh, being quick-witted, coming up with that story to scare these predators away. Uh, sometimes it's because people are brave and clever, like the knights in those traditional fables, waving their swords around and defeating the dragons in their stories. Sometimes in the stories, people, things are overcome because people are kind and generous and warm, like the kindest, like the smartest, rather, giant in town, who is the kindest giant in town as well. Um, that's how dragons in the stories, that's how things are overcome in the stories, and it is how things will be overcome today. Uh, by people being clever, by people being brave, by people being kind and generous. We learn that in the stories uh, and we see it in the world today. And we also saw it 75 years ago in the Second World War. Lots of examples of people being brave and clever and kind and generous. And so tomorrow when we're celebrating Victory in Europe Day, as Mrs Halliwell talked about, so we're remembering them and all the things they did. Uh, and we can also remember all the people today who are looking after us, who are being brave and kind uh, and clever and generous. Uh, so, when we're reading stories and we're practicing our reading, we can do it one just to enjoy the story. That's fantastic. I, I love a good book. You can probably see them all behind me. Uh, but also, we're learning to defeat dragons by learning to read. It's really important. We'll finish with a prayer. So we'll sit still as we're able. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the stories we love and for things that we learn from them. As we celebrate Victory in Europe Day tomorrow, 
So we thank you for all those who in the Second World War were brave and clever and kind and generous. And we thank you also for all those today who are the same and who are protecting us and keeping us safe. Please watch over them and help us in our homes and with our families to look after one another. Amen.